Okay. Um, well, uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, walk you through a presentation um, and I'll just bring that presentation up on my screen. Here we go. Oops. Okay. Um, and just to just to um, uh, re, uh, just to reinforce something I said earlier, um, you will all be getting a copy of this presentation. And uh, I'm not going to show you the notes pages today, uh, but it is um, amply uh, annotated with notes. So hopefully, uh, anybody uh, who is present today should feel reasonably confident in using this sort of presentation uh, with uh, another audience. Okay, so uh, let's just see what we're going to do. So basically, uh, this presentation uh, is really in, in, in five parts. Um, the first one, I'm just going to um, share with you uh, some, uh, some um, data and some research that we've got just to try and get our heads around the, what, what the, what's the problem that we're going to try and address. Uh, secondly, I'm going to try and situate um, retention and recruitment issues within a wider context, both within the U3A and indeed outside the U3A. Uh, and the most part, the bulk of this presentation is going to be to introduce you to the U3A retention and recruitment toolkit. Um, after a Q&A session following that, uh, there, there is a small group task and I'm going to be asking you to have a think about what you might want to do in your own network uh, in respect of uh, retention and recruitment issues. And, and obviously, I'm, I'm quite aware that every network is unique and different from every other network. And so there definitely won't be a one size fits all. But I think it would be really helpful if we could just share, uh, share um, uh, some ideas about uh, the network dimension to uh, U3A retention and recruitment. And then I'll finish uh, with a brief session on, uh, uh, some ne on next steps. OK, uh, so. Um, Uh, what's the problem? And uh, essentially, uh, there are two different sorts of problems, or three actually. Um, uh, firstly, and in the long term, um, we have historically been recruiting fewer new members and fewer newly retired people. Okay, And this is happening way before COVID. This is a trend uh, that you can discern uh, uh, gradually gathering force over the last 20 years or so. Um, in the short term, uh, we have the COVID problem, uh, which is that many members are apparently not renewing their subscription because of COVID. And then, of course, we have the historic problem of a relatively low uh, public profile. So, I mean, our members think that we're great, uh, but there is an issue about the public awareness of U3A. So let's look at, OK, so basically what this slide shows, this is actually about the growth of national membership. So basically, uh, you'll see that um, uh, if you look at the left-hand part of the uh, graph, um, uh, in, in 2010 or 2011, I think, uh, that roughly the national membership was growing at around 10% a year. Uh, if you go to the other end of the graph in 2019, you'll see it, was, it had slowed to around 3%. Now that's still positive, OK, still in 2019, there were more U3A members nationally than there were in the year before. But you can see that there is a definite trajectory uh, of uh, the slowing up of growth. And I think we have to anticipate that uh, either growth will have plateaued or indeed it may well have gone into reverse uh, because of COVID. OK, so uh, look at looking at COVID, um, you'll be aware of a survey which many of you will have uh, will have responded to. Um, uh, uh, in December and January uh, this year, uh, and nearly 700 UCAs um, uh, responded. Uh, but it would it looks like uh, that um, uh, that uh, quite between uh, quite a number of UCAs are reporting between 15 and 20 percent of their members uh, who are not uh, renewing their membership. Um, now this is a different issue. This is around the issue of the um, uh, the uh, the aging of U3A membership. And what you can see uh, is that um, in 2001, and this is the, uh, the first of three uh, national uh, surveys that we have data for, uh, in 2001, 21% or thereabouts um, of um, U3A members nationally were uh, under the age of 65. Um, that had shrunk 
by 2019 to just 7%. Okay, so uh, the, the, uh, the average age of U3A members is increasing and the proportion of the, um, uh, the younger members, the under 65s, is actually decreasing quite sharply uh, within the overall uh, U3A membership. Okay, now this has actually got some quite serious implications for the way that we have, we have historically tended to uh, uh, do recruitment. Most U3As that I have spoken to, and I've spoken to quite a few over the years, uh, will tell me that um, uh, they have tried this and they have tried that, but basically they tend to rely on word of mouth uh, to uh, recruit new members and to replace members who do not renew their membership, okay? Um, but there is a problem with this, which is that with word of mouth, you tend to, your, your, your existing members um, are recruiting people who are roughly like them uh, and who share the characteristics of existing members and doesn't necessarily engage the newly retired or younger members. And if I can just give you uh, a, a personal example from outside of the world of U3A, I'm a member of a walking group which has been going for uh, more than 30 years. Um, 30 years ago, it was set up for single people aged 30, between 30 and 40. Uh, it's now mainly couples. Uh, these, that's to say the single people have married each other and we're mainly <laughs> aged between 60 and 70. So, uh, you know, basically, if you rely on word of mouth, you tend to recruit uh, in the image of your of your existing members. Okay, let's let's step back and think about the wider context. Um, well, in terms of the wider context, there is a risk of becoming out of step with our uh, potential new members. And we have the the U3A has actually done some market research. Five hundred people um, were surveyed uh, a couple of years ago uh, to and asked about what they. Uh, we expected to do uh, in retirement. And there was some really good news in this survey and some really bad news. The really good news was that uh, uh, quite a large proportion of them, I think around half, were saying that they wanted to meet new friends, learn new things, study new things. Uh, and they were generally looking for the sorts of things that U3A um, offers. Um, however, uh, the challenging thing is that um, most of them uh, in focus groups were saying that they weren't particularly attracted uh, by organizations which they saw as catering for old people. Okay, uh, so uh, there's a bit of a, a dilemma there. Um, secondly, um, there are new threats from competitors. If you, if you just um, Google an organization called Rest Less, that's quite a nice trendy title, you'll find that they're offering lots of courses, uh, mainly courses which are paid for, but they're also trying to develop an online community. Uh, and, the, and of course, there are other ones, uh, other potential competitors that I needn't uh, bother, but, uh, bother to list, but essentially there is an issue about the extent to which um, uh, some of the sort of people that we want to be able to uh, uh, join uh, U3A, that they might be, they might join one of our competitors instead. Um, thirdly, uh, there is, um, I think, uh, a need for U3A capacity building and training. And, and when you think about it, we have, as Hilary was saying in the introduction, we have come an enormous distance uh, in the last year in terms of engaging with new technology. I mean, <laughs> this time last year, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what Zoom was, okay? Um, so we have covered a lot of distance. However, it has exposed, the COVID crisis has exposed uh, uh, to some degree, the extent to which we had not previously engaged with uh, new technology, with social media, uh, with, uh, uh, with online platforms and so on and so on. Um, and, but fourthly, and this is by no means unimportant, um, uh, re perhaps regrettably, there are a lot of potential opportunities for us uh, which have been created by the pandemic. Uh, an awful lot of people aged 55 and above are, are, are regrettably going to be uh, coming out of full-time work uh, in the next couple of years, and many have already. Uh, and I mean, it's it's the the statistics are there. I mean, if you're if you're not in full time work uh, uh, in your late fifties, uh, uh, you're probably not going to get another full time job. So potentially, uh, we have people who uh, there are people who who might be might be attracted to uh, the U3A. 
Okay, so that's the outside context. What about the inside context? Um, well, uh, Hillary's already mentioned uh, the um, member link project, so I won't need to, I don't need to dwell on that. Can I just mention uh, that uh, my colleague, uh, Sue Stokes, is doing a tremendous amount of work to um, uh, support U3A is in preparing for U3A day. Uh, and if you haven't seen them already, uh, you, may just might, you may just want to take a note that on the 16th of March, um, uh, uh, there is, uh, Sue is going to be running um, several workshops or webinars on, uh, usual, uh, on social media. And uh, there are later workshops on PR links, uh, uh, public relation links, and uh, U3A web diet and all of these, sorry, and, and the U3A day, and all of these um, are widely advertised on the U3A uh, national website. So do have a look at those um, uh, those things. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that, I mean, obviously you'll all be aware of the fantastic array of tutorials uh, to support individuals and U3As using Zoom, uh, which are available uh, via the national website. Uh, I'm pleased to say that Liz Thackeray, who is, um, uh, animating a lot of this work, it is now preparing a whole suite of further um, uh, videos uh, on different aspects of uh, Zoom and social media. So there is, uh, the, you know, the, the retention and recruitment issues uh, are within this wider context uh, for the U3A. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the U3A retention and recruitment toolkit. Um, now, um, can I just answer one question first? Uh, and that, that's a question that uh, was was uh, asked me uh, some months ago. Somebody said, oh, my God, there's so much in it. Do we have to use all the tools? <laughs> and of course, the answer is no, you don't. I mean, the uh, the, the, the the toolkit is what it says. Uh, it, it, it has a number of different resources uh, and which hopefully will assist you in however in, in whichever way you choose to. Uh, develop a project, address these issues within your U3A. Every U3A is different. Uh, and the reason we've developed such a wide number of tools uh, is uh, to, uh, to try and ensure that which, whatever the issue that, you're, that you want to address, there's something there to help you do it. Um, so the, uh, the toolkit, the, the tools basically fall into eight main categories. Uh, so the first one, and perhaps the one which may be foremost in some of your minds is retaining your current members. Um, secondly, there's uh, 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 several tools on developing your relaunch or your retention or your recruitment team. Uh, then there's some uh, tools on planning. Uh, then there's some specific tools really for use by interest group coordinators and interest group leaders or facilitators or conveners or whatever you call them. Um, then there's some tools on using social media effectively, uh, and uh, then actually it's only <laughs> it's only when we get to the next uh, the uh, category uh, that's category five uh, uh, sorry it's category six um, it, that's where uh, there's a group of tools actually about um, promotion and advertising and relaunching. Uh, and then uh, there's some uh, tools which you probably have seen already, uh, which are available from the brand website, and I'll talk about those. Uh, and then lastly, uh, uh, there's uh, some tools on welcoming new members. So what I'm going to do now is just basically go through uh, these different uh, 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 categories uh, and briefly introduce some of the tools. Uh, frankly, you would find it very boring if I described each of the tools in detail, uh, but I'll highlight some of the ones that you may that may be a particular interest to you. Okay, so retaining your current members. Um, this this is actually obviously a very important issue for some U3As. I mean, not not all U3As, of course. I mean, some U3As have actually grown uh, their membership in the last year. Other U3As have at least kept on to you know 98, 99% of their uh, current members. But some U3As. Uh, need to or feel that they need to address this issue. So basically, we've, we've produced two things here. Um, there's a how-to guide uh, uh, retaining. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to keep repeating HTG or how-to guide. There's a how-to guide, uh, which is very simply written uh, about retaining your current members. And this is based entirely on the um, experiences of uh, some 60 
U3As that have been working with my uh, working group uh, in, to develop the toolkit. Okay, so there's, uh, and in fact, that you will find uh, many examples, uh, many practical examples from these U3As uh, in this guide. Um, and secondly, there's a swap shop. Now, let me just try, let me try and explain what the, the thinking here. Um, what, what this swap shop does uh, is to um, categorize and brigade a whole host of interesting ideas and tactics and procedures and processes that people have invented uh, to make sure that their uh, current members stay with them. Uh, and uh, if I just list the, 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 the six categories, um, one is actually contacting non-renewers, people who don't renew. Uh, secondly, uh, there's a category which I've described as communication, communication, indeed communication. Um, there's a third category which is actually multiplying uh, the extent to which your, your offer, what you do as a U3A, is actually available online. Uh, and a fourth category, uh, as you might expect, uh, how U3As have been providing technical support to their, uh, to their members, to their committee, to their interest groups uh, uh, to go online. Uh, there's a fifth uh, uh, section on subscriptions and payments uh, and a last section on surveys, uh, consultations uh, and developing new ideas by canvassing uh, current members. So those are the, those are the um, tools in this uh, category. Um, the next category is developing your team. Um, and the first one, building support for recruitment in your committee, um, this was something that our, the 60 Pathfinder U3As that I've mentioned, they asked for this because some people found themselves in a position where they, they felt like a bit like a lone voice on a committee or, or even a lone voice in the U3A, not on the committee. And, and they, were, they, they, they were keen to uh, get a recruitment project going uh, and uh, they wanted to uh, think about how they could actually develop support uh, for that within their committee. So there's a, a guide on that. Um, and then there's a second guide. Uh, this is actually for committees. Uh, to, um, uh, to, to, uh, to generate support from within their U3A membership uh, uh, for um, a relaunch or recruitment projects. And basically the premise here, and there's a lot of, a lot of sort of uh, detail about how you might go about this, but the premise here is that um, the more members you can involve in this activity, uh, not only the better it will be, but it's a sort of virtuous circle. I mean, it's a shared effort uh, and that generates shared commitment uh, and that generates uh, enthusiasm. And with that, with that enthusiasm, you're able to do more, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's also a checklist. I know some people will groan at the thought of a checklist, uh, but basically uh, we thought it would be helpful um, if um, uh, uh, we just suggested, I think there are eight checklist questions checklist questions, because when you think about it, there's an awful lot that you might want to do before you actually physically uh, generate the very first promotional activity or the very first advert. I mean, uh, as, as somebody, uh, from, uh, somebody said to me, well, how can we start to recruit new members if we don't really have anything to offer them? Well, basically, uh, this checklist is suggesting the sorts of things which you can do uh, to make sure that you do have a, a robust and attractive offer uh, for new members. Um, so the, lastly, there are a couple of PowerPoints in this section, uh, and these PowerPoints are designed to be used for, by a committee for, uh, sorry, with its membership. Uh, and the, the one is called Why We Need to Recruit, and that contains some of the graphs that I showed you earlier. But basically, you can, as a U3A, you can add whatever you wish to uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this PowerPoint presentation, but the idea is that you share uh, the, uh, the, the reasons uh, why you need to engage in a relaunch or retention or recruitment activity. Um, and then lastly, uh, uh, in this section, uh, there is another PowerPoint um, where um, as, a, as a committee or as a recruitment team, uh, you can share with your wider membership uh, what your own recruitment project could look like. So there's, some, there's, a, there's obviously a, a, a model uh, project uh, contained in these slides, but again, uh, you are very welcome to customize these 
uh, to, uh, to suit the circumstances of your own U3A. Okay, um, planning. Uh, I mentioned uh, this research on prospective new U3A members, so that's part of the toolkit. Um, and then there's also um, a, a, um, a, a sort of planning instrument, uh, which is in the, in the shape of a PowerPoint um, about how you might um, plan uh, your recruitment project. And, and I have to say, if, you're, if you have a sort of marketing uh, or a, a project planning background, this will probably be old hat to you. Uh, however, um, hopefully it, will, it might be useful in the sense that it's all very much in the, within a sort of U3A uh, context. Uh, and for those of you who haven't uh, uh, engaged in this activity, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of step-by-step -step uh, method of uh, doing a, 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 a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis, for example, and, and similar sort of tools to help plan uh, a recruitment project. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, I anticipate there might be more groans here, um, monit monitoring and evaluation. Um, uh, you know, I am aware of the fact that every second that you spend monitoring and evaluating is a second that you're not actually devoting to developing your own uh, recruitment project. Uh, but this, this is a very short guide uh, suggesting some relatively painless ways of making sure that uh, whatever you decide to do as a U3A, that you, you, you can keep yourselves on track. And at the end of the uh, project or the activity, you can say to yourselves, yep, this is what we did, this is what we achieved, and this is how we achieved it. Okay, uh, moving on, um, there is a whole section uh, in the toolkit on interest groups, um, because of course, uh, interest groups are really uh, at the heart of what U3As do. Uh, and um, the first one at the top is rather boldly entitled, uh, Making Your U3A Offer Irresistible, okay? Um, uh, and bearing in mind uh, that, um, uh, that uh, uh, you know, we have been, we have been struggling in, in or some U3As have been struggling in the circumstances of the pandemic, and yet others have actually done fantastic things, uh, not only getting their existing groups to uh, open and to go online, uh, but actually creating a whole host of new groups. Uh, and there's lots of examples in this guide of different ways in which uh, U3As have grown uh, their interest group offer. But of course, the next question is, <laughs> people say, well, of course, we'd love to do all, this thing, all these sorts of things, but our problem is we find it almost impossible to recruit uh, more in interest group conveners. Uh, and this is, again, this is based not on some sort of abstract theory, but very much on the experience of different U3As, uh, a seven-step guide uh, to recruiting more interest group leaders or conveners or whatever you call them. Um, and I should just add that there are some videos uh, in this, uh, in this uh, group. Um, uh, and um, the first one is really uh, designed, is really aimed at the, um, the um, experienced but skeptical uh, interest group um, convener. Um, you know, why on earth should I take my interest group online? Why should I bother with Zoom? Um, and um, uh, it's, uh, I, I hope uh, that I, in this, in this video, I hope that we demonstrate not only the incredible potential benefits uh, to interest groups from uh, going online and using the available online resources, uh, but also demonstrate actually how relatively simple it is. Um, the next video uh, is, is, uh, uh, is, is, part, is part of the suite really, is how you can uh, get your interest group online in five easy steps. Uh, and the third one, I, I, I can't, uh, I, I have to mention this one, uh, it's entitled Every Interest Group Can Go Online. Uh, and um, we set ourselves a challenge. We thought, well, okay, what's the most difficult sort of interest group that, pe that couldn't possibly go online? Um, and we fixed on a dance group uh, because people often say, oh, well, we, it's difficult to run our dance group and we can't get a tutor and et cetera, et cetera. Um, anyway, uh, in this particular example, um, I, we, we look at um, Scottish country dancing. Now, this is not uh, because we want every u 3 to have a Scottish country dancing group, but basically uh, we can, we have demonstrated, I think, that even Scottish country dancing can go online. Maybe not forever, but, but certainly uh, for the period of, of lockdown and uh, social distancing. Okay, 
Um, the next section, I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on this um, because um, I think we've all had to come to terms with using social media uh, uh, since the pandemic started. Um, and uh, I, I would be surprised if there were many youth relays present here today um, who um, don't have uh, some sort of social media presence, probably on Facebook. Um, but basically, uh, the, the issue around um, social media really is, is who is it for? Because if it's, if it's just for your existing members, then a closed group is probably going to be fine. Uh, but if you actually want uh, want to use Facebook or other social media to bring your youth relay to the attention of non-members or potential visitors or potential members, uh, then you need to go about it in certain ways. So uh, these, three, uh, uh, these three guides here, setting up a Facebook page uh, uh, with uh, designed to appeal to non-members, to potential members, uh, and then get it, getting and keeping website and media, social media traffic. Uh, uh, and then measuring, see, just making sure that you know how effective your social media uh, footprint is. Uh, these are all parts of this uh, of, of this category. So finally, we actually come to what most people think of as recruitment. Okay, what about recruiting and relaunching and promoting? Um, so uh, the guides in this section, there's one on re relaunching your U3A. Uh, and I would imagine that just about every U3A or many U3As present here today, we'll be thinking about eventually having a sort of celebration when we are finally enabled to uh, meet in person. Uh, but this uh, guide is a quite short guide uh, suggesting that actually, as well as it being a celebration for uh, existing members, uh, can't it be made into an event where you appeal uh, to the non-membership, uh, to the to, to potential members and visitors uh, in order to recruit people to your youth free aid. Um, the second uh, uh, guide in this section is called transforming your website into your shop window. And again, it's a question of who do you think your website is for? Is it for your existing members only? Well, that's fine. Uh, uh, the, 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 the certain conclusions follow, follow from that. But if it's for um, potential members or visitors or people who are not currently members uh, of your U3A, then really that demands a different approach. Uh, and this uh, guide uh, is uh, uh, firmly based on the experience of several U3As. Uh, and in fact, as a matter of fact, there is actually a video uh, which we've made as well to accompany the guide, which is three U3As talking about um, how they transform their websites uh, and, uh, and how they did it and what they did uh, and, and why. Uh, and then there are also displays, uh, also guides on uh, pop-up displays for recruitment um, and um, uh, using Facebook adverts. Can I just, can I just pause on this? Um, you, Facebook adverts are not the same as having a Facebook page. Facebook adverts are where you pay Facebook uh, to send your advertisement to people who are on Facebook where you define the characteristics of, of those people. So you might define them by physical, by geographical location. You might define them by their interests. You will probably define them by their age. Uh, and basically, yes, it does cost money, uh, but um, the U3As that have used Facebook adverts, and there's uh, a case study attached to this guide, um, you uh, have found that actually uh, they get uh, far more effective advertising at far lower cost than they would do if they just paid for adverts in local newspapers. So using Facebook adverts seems to be uh, uh, seems to have a lot of uh, possibilities. Um, and then lastly, and I have to say this is pretty speculative because I've yet to find a youth ray that's actually doing this. Uh, but basically. Every Tom, Dick and Harry is selling things online uh, and they could be from Facebook selling groups or it could be from, uh, 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 from um, eBay or this, that or the other. And basically uh, this, um, this is uh, really uh, a sort of think piece and it's saying, well, maybe, maybe it's possible to promote uh, U3A membership um, using, for example, something like eBay. It costs virtually nothing to promote things on, on eBay. Uh, you can put lots of photographs on. And when you think of the sort of hook, uh, well, I mean, things like we've got Mother's Day coming up. And, and although it may be the case 
that the average uh, eBay uh, 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 profile is sort of people in their 30s and 40s, but might they not be interested in, in, in um, uh, paying uh, for a subscription for mum uh, for Mother's Day, for example? So anyway, uh, just a possibility of promoting U3A membership uh, online. Um, okay, so now you've probably all come across this, these uh, materials already, uh, but basically in the uh, new brand center on the U3A national website, uh, there are all sorts of materials in terms of uh, leaflets, in terms of uh, posters, in terms of uh, pop-up stands and so forth. Um, and uh, there are also uh, in the guide, some model emails and letters uh, for uh, promotion and recruitment. And, uh, you know, again, these are, you will want to put your own stamp on such emails, I'm sure. Uh, and that's why we've made it so that these can be uh, customized uh, according to your, own, uh, uh, to your own wishes. Okay, and then lastly, um, welcoming new members. Um, uh, we have, there is a guide uh, which is uh, directed to enrolling and welcoming new members online. Uh, and there's also an online welcome pack. Now this welcome pack is available from the brand center uh, and it's very, it's quite a stylish and attractive uh, pack. Uh, it, it has a lot of generic information about the U3A, uh, some nice pictures, but there are also pages uh, where you can describe exactly what benefits you're offering within your own U3A uh, and that's customizable uh, and uh, downloadable uh, from the brand center. Although I should just say uh, that to, to, to access uh, the welcome pack and indeed some of the other materials on the brand center, you do have to go through your authorized uh, uh, brand center contact who will normally be uh, the um, the, uh, uh, the contact that you have between uh, for, from your U3A uh, to the national office. Okay, so uh, as uh, Hilary was saying, where is the, where is the toolkit? Uh, the toolkit is on the, uh, uh, or rather, uh, I think uh, so far seven or possibly eight of the tools have been published, but they are being published at a rate of knots. Uh, and if you go to the national U3A website, uh, if you go, if you follow the uh, the button to the learning side uh, and then if you follow the further button to sources online uh, you will be able to find uh, the uh, tools which have been published so far on uh, uh, from the uh, retention and recruitment toolkit. So that's the end of this presentation. Um, what you might want to do is perhaps use this um, presentation uh, by way of uh, um, structuring some sort of event for your network. Uh, so uh, if you think about um, what we're doing this morning, um, you could use this presentation or indeed the uh, PowerPoint, uh, which you also have, um, as some sort of stimulus for discussion. Uh, I'm sure that um, with, between the um, U3As at your network meeting, you could handle uh, a Q&A session. And indeed, if, you, if there are things that you can't uh, uh, figure out, uh, please uh, contact me. Um, then you could actually perhaps have a small group discussion about what you want to do in your network to support each other in uh, improving your retention of existing members and recruiting new ones uh, uh, and capture that through discussion. And hey, presto, you have an event. Um, so if you want to contact me, um, uh, this, these are my contact details. It's pkmartinez14 at gmail.com. Uh, and I will try and deal with any um, requests uh, or correspondence that I get as, quick as, as quickly as possible. So I hope you've enjoyed the presentation uh, and uh, good luck with your uh, network uh, discussions uh, and progression.